take Daniel back, back to his roots, mm. County Donegal. It's quite a humble beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, I was born in, in a very small village uh, called Kincastle. It's in the northwest coast of Ireland. And uh, we're right by the sea. And I suppose, you know, if I were describing it, I, I always think of it in a very, um, that I was very privileged to grow up there. Um, it, it, the fact that it was so rural, everybody knew everybody. Um, so that you were never on your own, mm -hmm. you know, because the community was, it was very community based. And even to this day, that is apparent. The world, of course, has moved on and mm -hmm. things are much faster, but still everybody knows everybody. And, and I think that, that it's, it's something that, that I am very grateful to have grown up among this community. Your father was incredibly hardworking and your mum amazingly supportive to you. Mm. you know, just what an inspiration have they been? Well, my father um, died very young. He Actually, he died the very age that I am now, to the, to the days, uh, was the age he was when he died. And I suppose this, at this period, I'm realising how young he was yeah. and how much living he must have thought he had to do. He died very suddenly in, in August 1968. Um, prior to that, he was. He was like all the men at home. A lot of them went to work in Scotland. Um, and it was just general labouring on farms and whatever they could do. Uh, he would come home then at the various times of the year, you know, to, to set potatoes and vegetables and do the turf. You know, we use the turf for the for the fire and, and all of that kind of thing. But a lot of the period was spent away from home. My mother says that in the 19 years that they were married, they spent three of those years together. No. So it's, you know, it was a hard life. And it wasn't just my mother and father. It was most mm. of the couples at home, you know, experienced the same thing. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, I suppose after my father died, she was the the mainstay. Mm -hmm. And although it, it was um, very difficult for her, we certainly didn't want for anything, you know. Do you think you've taken that on through your life, though? Because you are an incredibly hard-working person. You're very supportive and loving to your fans. Do you think you've got that from both your parents? Do you think? I suppose, yes. You... you, you I suppose you get these, whatever way you are, from the people that you grow up with. And certainly, you know, from my mother, I would have gained a lot. And again, I go back to the community because mm -hmm. it was such a tight knit community. And the interaction with people was so strong. Um, and meeting people and people in and out of the house. It, when I meet people, I feel the same way as I did. Yeah you know, 40 years ago. Because whatever I would have done in life, I think to have interaction with people mm. would have been the most important thing. I found a similarity between us. Uh, you were in the choir at a young age, just like me. Do you think that actually helped to grow your faith as well? Well, I, I was always singing in the choir from I was very young. And, you know, when you grow up in a community like we did, it was very important. The church was very important. You know, we went to the church for every everything. There was all kinds of, you know, uh, feast days and October devotions and benediction and, you know, Lent and First Fridays and the May devotions and everything. There was so much more than there is now. Um, I think that you know, singing in the choir gave me the love of, of inspirational music. I didn't know it was inspirational yeah. music. I didn't know what the word inspirational meant <laughs> as a child, obviously. Uh, but, you know, to sing all the hymns and, and mm -hmm. uh, there were the old hymns we sang in, in the church. And, and to this day, I love the old hymns. And when I was recording the the albums of inspirational songs, there was a lot of the old hymns that I, I recorded um, as a result of this. But where does faith come from or where would my faith come from? I think 
it's a combination mm -hmm. of things. It's, it's yes, the, the opportunity to sing in the church. But growing up where I did, you know, it was not an option not to go to Mass. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because it was a, you, a, an obligation. You, you didn't have a choice. And I'll, I'll clarify this as I go on. It was not until I started to travel that I realized I wanted to go to Mass. I didn't not want to go when I was at home. But you couldn't miss it because, number one, you couldn't stay at home because somebody would say you weren't going to Mass. Mm -hmm. And if you tried to hide somewhere, somebody would be sure to see you. Yeah. And you'd be, <laughs> you know, somebody would find out. And it wasn't until I started travelling and I found myself in cities, wherever it might be, on a Sunday morning, there wasn't the luxury of Saturday night uh, vigil Mass then, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would find myself looking for churches um, and I remember saying, well, why now am I doing this? And I realised that I needed to do it yeah. just for me, yeah. not for for my family or for the neighbours or for the priest or for the school teacher. It was for myself I was going. When you look at a lot of reality TV stars nowadays, they do tend to have it sort of fairly set for them. They've got the record company, the managers, mm. and it's all nice. But it wasn't like that for you at all. You really worked hard. Mm. Well, you know, the opportunity to g travel with Margaret was b brilliant. I suppose it was a bit like an apprenticeship, <laughs> if you want to call it that, because I was able to stand back. There was no demands on me at all, sing a few songs and observe what it was like in the music business. But when I started on my own, I made the record, Donegal Shore, and Stand Beside Me in February 83, and then released it uh, a few months later. That was starting from nothing. You funded it all yourself, didn't funded you? Funded it myself. <laughs> and um, I released the, the record, got a thousand records. It cost um, about 1,200 pounds, euro, I don't know what it was, punts I suppose mm -hmm. at the time, uh, to make the record. And uh, I think it was punts. <laughs> and um, I got a thousand records for that. Wow. And I sold them for 150. You so did that yourself as well, so didn't you? I did. I sold them anywhere and everywhere. Even on a bus to Knock. <laughs> we went on a bus trip to Knock <laughs> and I sold them to people that didn't even have record players. Wow. I wasn't fussy, you know, as long as I got the money. <laughs> you met your manager, Sean, mm. and things went through the roof busy. Yes, I, I think meeting Sean was, was the best thing career-wise that happened to me. Um, I had uh, formed a band in 1983 and we stayed together for a year, just playing around home and a few other places, but we had no great success. Then I had another band for a few years. A friend of mine, Nan Moy, was my manager. And we did better, but, you know, neither Nan nor I had the, I suppose, the, the know-how or the, the, the financial backing to go forward. And eventually, at the end of 85, having met McClerken from Ritz Records, uh, I did the Irish Festival in London in 1984, and Mick was there. Um, and um, through that, they approached me to see would I make a record. And of course, it was a wonderful thing. This this was started in '85, and uh, but by the end of '85, the album was released. It was called The Two Sides, mm -hmm. one being country and one being Irish, because I did both yes. songs. And uh, at the end of '85, we were getting very small crowds, and I financially couldn't continue. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to see Mick in December, and just to say that I didn't think. I was going to continue. And he then said, well, you know, we're getting a good reaction to the record. He says, what, you know, are you tied to your band? Is, are you, do you have contracts signed? And I, I had nothing signed with anybody. Yeah. He says, I think that, you know, if you looked at a, a, a different band and, and just took a different approach, it might work out better. So I went off the road in January 86 and four, f three of, of the band that I'm with now, the four of us, 
are together since March 86. Wow. And um, it was literally in that period, like switching on a light, mm -hmm. how quick it changed. I love the balance of your songs. Mm. And I know a lot of them are quite romantic. Um, but I love the story of how you proposed mm. to your wife. Absolutely lovely. Just tell the people who are new to, to Daniel O'Donnell, just tell them well, how Mage you proposed. Magella and I met in 1999 in Tenerife. I, I was going there on holidays for a number of years and I knew her parents. They had a bar and we went one night as we sometimes went for something to eat and Magella was there. That was September uh, 1999 and uh, we, you know we hit it off. We just seemed to get on well and um, eventually uh, in 2001 uh, she was there with her children Siobhan and Michael for Christmas to spend it with me and uh, we had planned by that time that we were going to be together so um, on Christmas day we were having dinner at the house and at our at where I lived and um, my mother was there and my sister and some neighbours that always join us. And um, I said to Magella, I said, you should go and phone your mother. And she went to, I'll do it later. And I said, go and phone her on Christmas Day before we start the dinner. So she went to pick the phone in the kitchen. I says, why don't you go into one of the rooms and where it's a bit quieter? And uh, she eventually went to the bedroom. And uh, I then followed her around. And when she was on to her mother, I just took the phone and I said, I have a bit of business to <laughs> attend to now. And uh, I said, I need to ask your daughter, will she marry me? And uh, she went to cry on the phone and Magella went to cry. <laughs> and we went downstairs and everybody downstairs went to cry. So it was a, a real good Irish event. Everybody was crying. And she is utterly beautiful. Yeah, she's and a, a great. Rock to you, she's you great. Think? Yes, yeah, she really is. She's fantastic. She's She's been tremendous. We've. I suppose it's hard to quantify what she means to me, or it's hard in words to say, but it's tremendous. It's just the best thing. What is your favourite food? Well, I love, I love mincing potatoes. Mm. You know, I love it. Or as we would say, mincing tatties. tatties. We're kind of influenced <laughs> by the Scots uh, <laughs> because so much movement between Ireland and Scotland. Um, and that's lovely when I go home and get that, it's fantastic. Um, I eat a quite a bit of fish, I love seafood like shellfish and mussels and prawns and all that kind of thing. And I, I like a wee bit of Chinese every so often. Uh, so I'm so just how do you very... stay so fit and healthy, which is the last question. Well, Come on I, Daniel, you've I got do, some secrets. I, no, I try to watch what I eat. <laughs> and more recently I've been watching a bit more. Uh, and try not to, even though I say I love the ta potatoes or tatties, I try not to eat too many potatoes. Don't eat bread if I can. And uh, I've tried recently not to be taking my daily intake of crisps and chocolate and 7 up. <laughs> so, I'm getting to 50. What do you say, you know? Well, Daniel, it's been an absolute pleasure. I can safely say you're one of the nicest people I've interviewed, completely grounded, and uh, long may we see you again in the future after you've had your, I don't know whether you can call it a slight sabbatical, you're still mm. doing about 60 odd shows, you know, you're still busy, but it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, thank you so, thank so you. much. Thank, thank you, you, Daniel. Thank you very much. Maybe thank the you. next time you'll cook me mince and tatties. Maybe you can come <laughs> to the studio. Oh dear, I think you yeah, need to, we... everything will be burnt. I think we'll get Daniel. Yeah, cooking I'd, with I'm, me in the studio, I'd yeah. Be a Three fantastic, meal. yeah, fantastic mm. cook I am. <laughs> yeah, I'd even burn salt. Up by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yeah. Rick.
requiring of us a song. Now how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange by the rivers of 